to me with that. Um, I really am incredibly grateful to come here. Um, it's rare that I have an opportunity to speak to students who are thinking and either engaged in these issues in the classroom so directly, not just hip hop, but hip hop and the question of social justice, which is a very specific lens for thinking about hip hop. Um, and so I'm really grateful um, to Scott for both inviting me and for having an ongoing series. It, it's a very rare thing. You shouldn't take it for granted. Those of you who are juniors and who've been coming to lectures like this for two or three years now should know that you know it's not a regular thing on college campuses to have both cl a class that's dealing with these issues, but also a constant rotating body of people taking these issues from a variety of perspectives and really helping you think about it. So do sign up for Scott in the back. I'm now going to promote his promotion because it's very important that, that you all participate in it. That, the, that this idea that, that we want to imagine that it doesn't matter what we consume, particularly in popular culture. People tell me Push those of you who either consume hip hop or have a deep emotional connection to hip hop to think critically with a slight bit of distance from what a good deal of the most visible hip hop, the most commercially successful hip hop, and the most seductive hip hop produces in the world today. So I want to repeat that because I'm being very specific about what kind of hip hop I'm talking about. I'm talking about the most commercially successful hip hop, the most visible and accessible hip hop, and therefore the most seductive and available hip hop that there is. And I, this is not something that's limited to just the United States. That is to say.